we're introduced to an ugly disgusting boy named Yuuki, who is falling down from the sky like a shooting star. A girl finds him, but sees two wolves trying to take him. As she scares the wolves off, she tries to wake his ugly face up and successfully does so. Earlier, an angel told him that he has lost his memories and that a girl would act as his guide, who is Kokoro. They begin camping in the woods for the night. Suddenly the two wolves appear again, giving Kokoro a chance to guide Yuuki through the fight. However, his weak ass fails the fight, and Kokoro has to save his lame bum from the wolves. Meanwhile, an orange-haired girl is cleaning herself in a lake. She is enjoying herself when suddenly she hears the cries of a man asking for help. The girl runs to help them and finds that the man has a disease. The other man asks the girl to bring him his medicine from his back. She returns with the medicine, but the two men appear to be thieves and steal her sword and she tries to catch them. Kokoro and Yuuki go to the market, where Yuuki teaches him about this world and the different things in it. They meet a lady running a crepe shop. She calls both of them siblings, but Kokoro corrects her. Kokoro gives him some money to buy food, but Yuuki does not recognize the money and tries to eat it, which makes Kokoro worry. She tells him about the money and its importance. After eating ice cream, they decide to go shopping. However, they run out of money and do not find a good place to stay. They decide to stay in the woods for the night. Suddenly, the idiot of a Yuuki is once again attacked by the two wolves, but Kokoro saves him and apologizes to him for the trouble. Kokoro decides to start working to earn some money. They meet Karin, a member of the guild association, who tells them that forming a guild will provide them with a place to stay and agrees to offer her a part-time job. They see different quests but find them very difficult and dangerous. Yuuki and Kokoro take on their first task and go to collect mushrooms. Kokoro guides Yuuki about the places where they can spot mushrooms. Kokoro finds a tiny brown thick mushroom and carries it around. The naive orange-haired girl still tries to bring the medicine to the men, not knowing that she got bamboozled. Her stomach growls because she has not eaten anything, but she suddenly sees the two thieves playing with her sword. She calls them, but after seeing her, they start running away. They hide inside the bushes but are suddenly attacked by some crows and get injured. Yuuki and Kokoro meet the orange-haired girl who is lying on the ground. Kokoro makes food for her, and she feels very happy. She thanks them for serving her rice because it boosts her energy. They introduce themselves to the girl, but she does not reveal her true name. Suddenly, a girl dressed in black watches them from afar and secretly charges huge mushrooms at them. As they battle the shrooms, Pecorine demonstrates her amazing strength. But one of the mushrooms snatches Kokoro. Yuuki sees this and unleashes his hidden powers that boosts his friends to the same level as Nina Agdal. After the fight, Yuuki and Kokoro collect the mushroom corpses for their quest. A small one tries to ambush the boy, but Pecorine catches it and instead of licking, bites it. However, she has a bad reaction to it and faints. In the meantime, there is a girl in a black dress named Carol who is moaning to some random cats about her inability to make friendships. Kokoro wakes up the next morning and finds Yuuki training hard as he wants to be a better warrior. While practicing, Yuuki hurts himself many times, which makes Kokoro worried. Yuuki joins her at the breakfast table after completing his practice. They get good compensation for the mushroom contest. Kokoro shares her worries for Pecorine, who is going to land us all. While eating breakfast, they meet a waiter who hears their conversation about earning money and advises them to start a guild. Kokoro finds it a good idea. The owner of the restaurant scolds the waiter for giving funny ideas to customers. Meanwhile, Pecorine wakes up, finding herself on a horse farm. She again starts her mission to find her father's sword but feels hungry. Suddenly, the two thieves, Ikachi and Charlie, hide somewhere to save themselves from the crows who attacked them in the woods. Ikachi advises Charlie that they should get rid of the sword because it proves to be unlucky. But Charlie is unwilling to throw the sword as they can both play with it at night. Yuuki and Kokoro visit a restaurant where an eating contest is being held. They find Pecorine as a contestant. She out-eats the competition and is crowned the winner. The two thieves also arrive at the restaurant, but after finding Pecorine, they run to save themselves. Pecorine, Yuuki, and Kokoro follow them but lose sight of them when they are attacked by another monster, who is sent by Carol. Pecorine fights back and defeats it with her crown power. She tells Yuuki and Kokoro about her sword. Suddenly, they hear some noise and find Carol collapsed on the ground. Pecorine wakes her up, introducing everyone to her. She gets annoyed when Pecorine tries to feed her hot rice. She makes her way back to her place while talking to herself about failing her plan. Later, she is sitting on a tree, thinking about Pecorine, when she hears two men talking. She realizes that they are the thieves who stole Pecorine's sword. Suddenly a huge dragon charges at them, which takes the two men along with it. 
Pecorine and the pair arrive in the city to look for the thieves, and suddenly they meet Carol there. Pecorine gets crazy after finding out that the black dress woman's name is Carol, as it's the name of her favorite corn star. I mean, you're not wrong, but you didn't have to say it. She offers to help them because they were nice to her when she collapsed. Pecorine tells her about the thieves and their appearance. Carol tells them that those two men were carried by the dragon, which reminds Kokoro about the guild quests for capturing the dragon. She takes them to the dragon's nest, where the two men are captured. Carol hides herself in a safe place and asks the other three to go near the dragon to take their sword. However, the dragon is hiding the sword in its mouth, and Yuki has a plan. He waves a cloth in front of the dragon to get his mouth open. However, the dragon captures him in its mouth, allowing Pecorine to climb on the dragon's face. Carol gets happy because she plans to let the dragon kill the three of them. Just as Kokoro was about to attack, Carol uses her magic to make it go sicko mode. As the dragon flies into the sky, it carries Yuuki, Pecorine, and the two robbers along with it. Pecorine manages to land a blow on the dragon's big fat nose, making it plummet to the earth and towards Carol. Carol's control spell breaks and the dragon turns on her as well. But Pecorine intervenes with her restored blade and with a swift strike, she finishes the dragon. The thieves apologize to Pecorine for snatching her sword and thank her for saving them. Kokoro is worried for Yuuki, but he is also fine. Pecorine thanks Carol for showing them the way to the dragon, which embarrasses Carol because she planned to kill them. Pecorine invites Carol for dinner, which she accepts after a little hesitation. They eat rice while talking and feel very good. Pecorine suggests the idea of starting a guild together where they can find delicious food. Kokoro and Yuuki accept the idea, but Carol does not want to become a part of the guild and walks out. She reaches her home and finds her three cats playing together. She eats the rice and finds it delicious, but she does not accept it due to her hatred for Pecorine. The following day, Carol is thinking about Pecorine's fighting skills and thinks that Pecorine might be cheating. She plans to stalk her in the hopes of finding her weakness. Meanwhile, Pecorine wakes up at a farm with a hungry stomach because she's clearly a pig that needs to be fed sausages. What do you mean by that? She goes to the restaurant and fills her hungry animal stomach with ten bowls of rice. Outside, she meets the two thieves who thank her for saving them from the dragon. And these crazy sons of guns take her to another restaurant to treat her to even more food. Damn, I really wonder how much fits in her mouth. In the meantime, Yuuki is sitting near a tree when he sees a girl named Eriko collapse on the ground. He gives her some rice, thinking she might be hungry, but she is surprised by his kind behavior. Yuuki and Kokoro find Carol peeking into the restaurant where Pecorine is stuffing her mouth with sausages. As they ask her why, she gets annoyed and lies to them. They offer her to eat with them, and she reluctantly accepts it. As Pecorine tries to offer Carol food, she becomes incredibly rude and acts like a big disgusting piece of cake. She wants to order the fish and chips, but the owner is out of ingredients because the fatso of a pecorine already put them in her mouth and swallowed the big brown crispy fish. Pecorine recommends the secret dish, however the food contains bugs, surprising Carol because she finds it as disgusting as Pecorine's obsession with pudding and swallowing food. The other three eat them happily. Pecorine passionately shoves her spoon into her mouth, and she ends up loving the food after trying it. Pecorine recommends the caterpillar, but Carol says she doesn't want to eat something so big and meaty. As they finish the food, Kokoro presents a guild application and asks both of them to join the guild. Pecorine is glad, but Carol is not willing to join the gang and walks out like a cold-hearted loser. Carol is annoyed at herself for liking them because her mission is to eliminate Pecorine and not to become her friend. She finds a tree full of fruits nearby and starts eating them. She is approached by a strange girl dressed in black, but she scolds her for saying that they are the same. Pecorine got an offer for a part-time job at the restaurant. After hearing this, Kokoro hides the application paper. During her shift, three little girls arrive at the restaurant, and Pecorine serves them food. They want to form a guild, but due to their age, they cannot. Pecorine compliments their friendship and gives them some food recommendations. It is revealed that Carol works for someone else who provided her with the power of the Princess Knights. Her leader calls of the assassination due to a change in circumstances and tells her she will show her the path to follow. She enters the restaurant and announces her willingness to join the guild. But suddenly a strange gigantic fatso enters the restaurant, breaking everything and asking for food. I see Nikado Avocado has gained some extra weight. The owner of the restaurant who is supposed to be some wannabe Andrew Tate threatens him, but he gets his cheek slapped by the fatso. Nikado Avocado 1, Andrew Tate 0. 
he threatens to shut down the shop if she doesn't make him an awesome meal. Pecorine turns into Andrea Tate and accepts the battle. She starts cooking different bugs for him, and everyone appreciates her cooking skills. She reveals she learned to cook different bugs and monsters on her journey. She serves the food to the ugly fatso, but Carol adds some magic funny juice to it, making the food even better. He takes a bite, but ends up devouring the whole meal within a matter of seconds. The man even starts hearing the food talking to him but throws the remaining food away, calling it tasteless. Pecorine becomes angry and throws his lame fat ass out of the restaurant, and everyone appreciates Pecorine for her bravery. As everything gets settled down, Carol picks up the guild application from the ground, announcing her intention to join the guild, which surprises everyone. They take the application to the guild, where they name it the Gourmet Guild in order to satisfy Pecorian's need for big tasty meaty things. As they enter their new house, they find it is in horrible condition as it has been abandoned for several years. They call the guild member to complain about the house's condition. However, Carol becomes scared after hearing that ghosts live there, but Pecorine gets very excited as she wants to have some fun at night with them. Their mission to clean the house begins. Carol starts with dusting, and Kokoro starts washing the bed sheets and curtains while Yuuki and Pecorine take the furniture out of the house. Pecorine is upset after finding the dining table is missing. It is a necessary item for her as she wants to enjoy a place where she can put things in her mouth along with her friends. However, she goes into the woods with an axe to make a new table. Kokoro goes to the market to buy things for the new house and hands over the cleaning responsibility to Carol. She arrives at the market and finds a shop for plates and pans. She buys new dishes and cups when the shopkeeper gives her a discount. Suddenly, a girl named Suzum arrives, who works as Lady Saren's maid. Saren orders Suzum to help Kokoro carry her things to her house in the cart. On the way home, Kokoro wishes her bond with Yuuki was like Suzum's is with Saren. They lose their way in the woods and get frightened when it turns dark at midday. Suddenly, the donkey breaks the cart and runs into the woods. Suzum and Kokoro plan to capture him, but they accidentally capture another animal who talks and calls herself Rima. She offers them to pull their cart as their donkey ran away. Meanwhile, Carol is cleaning the house and Yuuki helps with cleaning the windows. However, he falls down from his chair and loses consciousness. In his dream, he meets Ameth, who asks him about the guild he started. She tells him that all three girls have their missions and problems. However, Carol is in the most difficult position. She warns him to be careful, as the enemy knows his existence. She disappears, and Yuuki wakes up. Outside, Yuuki and Carol compliment Pecorine for making such a beautiful table. But unfortunately, the table is too big and thick to fit through the hole of the door. So Pecorine is forced to cut the sides of the table to reduce its width. As Rhyme is taking Suzum and Kokoro to their house, they are attacked by three bandits, scaring them. They attack Rima because they want to take her for themselves. However, she reveals her true personality and beats the three bandits, surprising the two girls. Rima eats an apple, and it turns her body into a girl, which shocks Kokoro and Suzum. Is this supposed to be the real-life depiction of a furry? <laughs> Meanwhile, Yuuki, Carol, and Pecorine have cleaned the whole house, but they are now worried for Kokoro who appears behind them with the items she bought from the market. She appreciates everyone's efforts and sets up the decorations in the house. Pecorine cooks delicious meals for everyone to celebrate the completion of their first task. They enjoy their food and thank Pecorine for cooking. The next day, Yuuki has a terrible cold and the girls do their best to cure him. Kokoro places a cold cloth on his head, and Pecorine makes different foods for him which are as hot as she is, in the hopes that he will feel better. Carol tells him to act like a man. Yuuki's condition is getting worse as time passes. Kokoro tries to make an ancient remedy which she used to make in the village. She adds bugs to it, which disgusts Carol. Carol tries to tell them that adding bugs to everything will not help them, so they should avoid it. She decides to take Yuuki to a real hospital. They place him on a cart, and with the help of a map, they try to find it. At the hospital, they meet a girl at the reception who takes Yuuki to the examination room, where Dr. Mitsuki checks him. She quickly calls the receptionist to prepare for surgery, surprising the girls. As he's taken to the operating room, they suddenly meet a skinny man, who is trying to escape. It is the ugly fatso from the restaurant who tells them that this isn't a hospital but a prison. If this is true, we should definitely put Nikado Avocado here. <laughs> However, one of the demon girls comes back carrying the injured fatso, which scares the girls. The girl named Iriko is later approached by a fortune teller 
who has a skeleton father who tells fortunes. She doesn't like this at first, but after hearing about soulmates, she realizes that the fortune teller is legit. On her way back to the hospital, Eriko beats many thieves and takes all of their money. It is revealed that she is looking for Yuuki because, when he offered her food, she fell in love with him. As luck would have it, she finds him in the hospital room, and her strange behavior horrifies Yuuki. She tries to feed him rice, to which she adds her secret slimy juicy fluids, if you know what I mean. Unaware of this, the girls wake up in the gourmet guild, thinking about Yuuki. They decide to visit the hospital after breakfast. However, they see a group of men protesting outside the hospital, and the doctor who was treating Yuuki is standing at the door listening to their demands. They are here for Eriko, who took all of their money, which they fairly stole from people. Eriko arrives at the gate and shows her magical powers, revealing her as the destroyer. The three beat everyone and kick some buns. Everyone cries for help and begs for treatment. After witnessing this, Kokoro Carol and Pecorine plan to rescue Yuuki from the devilish hospital. As Mitsuki is treating the new patients, the three girls secretly enter the hospital. They find Eriko inside Yuuki's room, presenting him with a cursed engagement ring. Just as she is about to give him the ring, the room fills with pink smoke. As Eriko leaves the room to check the smoke, the girls take Yuuki with them, but they are about to be caught by Mitsuki and Eriko. Carol makes a 600 IQ move and acts as a patient to divert Mitsuki and Erika's attention toward her. Meanwhile, Pecorine throws Yuuki out the window and Mitsuki tries to treat Carol with her new drug, called Help. Kokoro and Pecorine take Yuuki to another hospital, where they find out that he has a normal cold and will get better with some rest. In the morning, Carol finally comes back home, and Pecorine prepares breakfast for everyone. At the table, Pecorine formally announces their very first guild quest. The farmers from Targum village need some extra hands for harvesting spices. Carol refuses, saying that she doesn't want to see Pecorine eat and swallow red spicy things. I tell you what though folks, that's bloody nice! However, Pecorine uses her puppy eyes, forcing Carol to join them. At the village, there is a man who is collecting sticks, but he suddenly gets attacked by an exact replica of himself. On their way to the village, the group sets up camp. Yuuki is preparing a campfire, and Carol is trying to catch some fishes. After no success, Kokoro decides to make soup from plants and frogs and Pecorine catches a chicken, which relieves Carol. After devouring the big tasty meaty swollen meal, everyone gets to sleep, but Kokoro is drinking her tea, glad to have started a guild. The next morning, the group wakes up at the camp, but suddenly Yuuki is kidnapped by a strange animal, who throws him onto a tree. When he wakes up, he sees a speaking tree trunk next to him. Suddenly, a girl appears behind a tree and takes the small tree trunk from him. She introduces herself as AI, and reveals she can talk to plants and animals. Kokoro and the other girls arrive as well and thank AI for saving Yuuki. After a long journey with a few bumps, the group makes it to the village, where they meet the leader of the village, Misato. As excited as they are about the upcoming harvest, the group isn't the only guild to help out with this harvest. It is revealed to be Rima's guild, and they are on their way to the village. Unfortunately, they see their doppelgangers standing in front of them, and they both launch the same attack on each other. Meanwhile, the group is exploring the village, and they love it except for Carol, who is clearly a city. Suddenly, they see a sleeping girl floating in the air, and then falling to the ground. She introduces herself as Hatsune, and is excited to meet them. Just as Rima's group is dealing with the shadows, a third party intervenes. From the dust, a woman appears that claims to be simply looking for some fun. She orders Rima to stand up and fight her. Back to the village, Hatsune reveals that she has a sister in Rima's guild who is suffering from a disease. She is excited, as she will finally meet her after many years. She is very weak, but Hatsune is excited to give her the new book she bought for her. In the aftermath of Christina's attack, Shiori has been separated from the other members of her guild. Unable to pick herself back up, her doppelganger approaches her and disappears. We're then taken to Hatsune, who somehow meets Shiori and gives her the book she loves. It contains information about different animals and plants. However, she suddenly falls sick. Just as she apologizes to Hatsune, she wakes up and finds out that it was a dream, and that she is captured by her doppelganger. The following day, the group gathers with the other adventurers, ready to start picking spices. Misato and Hatsune check up on them, but Hatsune accidentally reveals that she has superpowers, surprising Carol and the other members. Misato asks everyone to keep it a secret. Suddenly, they hear some screaming. They find Rima and her group. They reveal how they were attacked by things that look just like them and that Shiori is still missing. 
Patsyun gets worried for her sister. She overhears the other people talking about mysterious shadows who attack humans in the forest. Patsyun uses her superpowers to look into Rima's mind. Meanwhile, Christina is sitting in the forest and is busy killing the shadows with her power. She wonders what the shadows are trying to do in this world. Patsyun is determined to head into the forest and find her sister. Misato tries to stop her, but Rima decides to join her in finding Shiori, as she is a member of her group. Yuki and his group also decide to join them in their search for Shiori, but Carol is unwilling to join them. On the way to the woods, Kokoro asks Rima about her health, which has gotten better due to her healing magic. As they enter the forest, they feel some kind of weird energy. Hatsune flies to look into the forest from above, but she is attacked by someone and falls to the ground. After getting up, she sees Shiori, whose body changes color. She tries to attack Hatsune, but she counters her attack. As she disappears, the group arrives and asks Hatsune about what just happened. Meanwhile, Carol thinks about how her master must be behind all of this. She knows that if they aren't stopped, the whole village will be destroyed. All of a sudden, the shadows attack the farm under command of Shiori. Pecorin quickly jumps to the villagers' defense. The group sees this and gets confronted by Christina. They get into a fierce battle in which Christina destroys the group one by one. Yuuki gets knocked unconscious and returns to the astral plane. She tells him about Christina, whom she has met many times. She gives him his knightly powers back, in the hopes that he can launch an attack against Christina to help his friends. She reminds him of the days when they used to adventure together. Meanwhile, Rima is about to lose the fight with Christina when Yuuki wakes up and is ready to fight again. For the first time, he uses his godly powers, surprising everyone. Rima also turns into a girl and launches an attack on Christina. Everyone attacks Christina but fails to defeat her because she has eaten and swallowed too much white cream, making her too powerful. Yuuki launches a strike as well, but she kicks him in his stomach, injuring him. She makes her way to the forest while saying that they should return to the village. Meanwhile, Pecorine is still fighting with the shadows in the village. Carol finally uses her magic and destroys the shadows. While Shiori is distracted, Hatsune charges towards her and enters her consciousness. In her mind, Hatsune saves her sister from drowning but Shiori isn't willing to go. Hatsune convinces her eventually, but a shadow appears in front of them. The two sisters work together and launch a powerful arrow at the creature, which weakens it. Carol chants a spell and sucks the shadow into a big black hole while Pecorine delivers a final blow, destroying it for once and for all. Everyone rushes towards Shiori, who has turned back to normal. The following day, the group is eating rice when Kokoro describes the troubles farmers face here because of animals that eat their crops. Pecorine decides that their new quest is to help the farmers get rid of the animals, for which they will be rewarded with rice. Kokoro and Yuuki show their scarecrows which they named Lady Amethy. Carol accepts the quest, but she is not happy as she wants a real reward. Carol remembers her last conversation with her leader, who wants her to observe Yuuki along with Pecorine. They visit the guild, where they find a quest to help the three girls who were too young to form an official guild. They need a master to teach them the basics of a guild. However, Karin informs them that this quest is not officially approved, so they cannot take it yet. They meet the three little girls outside the guild, where Misagi is crying and the other two are trying to calm her down. They reassure them that they are serious and not acting like other kids. Yuuki is happy to help and agrees to be their master. At night, Carol tries to pick a quest for the girls, but she does not find anything suitable for them. Meanwhile, Yuuki is preparing treasures that they will use in their quest. Pecorine Carol and Kokoro introduce the quest to the girls in which they will have to find a treasure hidden by them in the woods. With a map and some camping gear, the girls set off with Yuuki. Pecorine is sure that they will not forget the route and will reach the treasure easily. However, Yuuki is bad at reading maps, and they soon wander off the route and enter dangerous territory. They are suddenly attacked by small spiders. At first, they panic, but then they fight back and defeat them. Kokoro and the girls secretly try to show Yuuki the right path, but this idiot sandwich still leads them the wrong way. Pecorine tries to steer them back with a monster costume she made, but they attack Pecorine and throw her off the hill. Carol and Kokoro continue to follow them, but the kids are confronted by a fox. Yuuki tries to save them but Carol uses her magic to cook him up. I guess we all know which part of his body will be devoured first. They get tired and decide to take some rest and eat their lunch. On the other hand, Carol and Kokoro get tired after defeating many monsters in the background. Pecorine suddenly arrives with the bad news that the girls are moving towards a monster bird's nest, which is extremely dangerous. Suddenly they see a monster bird flying in the sky, with Yuuki in its mouth. The little girls try to rescue him, but they are attacked by the bird and get defeated as well. 
the monster bird takes the unconscious girls into its nest. Finally, Carol and Kokoro arrive and try to help, but they are tired from all the work they have already done. Pecorine is unable to fight back because she cannot get out of her suit. Carol uses her magic, but gets exhausted after using it, unable to keep fighting. The monster bird approaches Pecorine and hits her. She finally gets out the costume and finds the girl's lunch, and by eating it, she powers up. She strikes the bird and saves everyone. As the girls finally wake up, they see the now cooked up bird. The group compliments them on completing their first quest and gives them a huge egg as treasure. However, it hatches and hugs them. At the market, there is a long line of people with lottery tickets in their hands. Kokoro is also waiting in line with four cards, and as luck would have it, on the fourth try she wins a prize. When Carol returns home, she finds out about Kokoro winning the lottery. Pecorine announces that they are going to the beach to celebrate and spend their vacation there. The night before leaving for the beach, Kokoro seeks Yuuki's approval of her swimsuit, as she has never worn one before. Yuuki approves, and Kokoro shows him an instruction book for swimming and shares a swimming guide with him. They practice on the bed and the floor, excited for their new adventure. The next day they arrive at the beach, and everyone is very excited. Pecorine asks Carol to go swimming, but she is scared because she doesn't know how. Pecorine decides to push her floaty, making her scared. Kokoro asks her why she's so energetic today, and it turns out that she gains her strength and energy from the armor she always wears, but using it makes her hungry. Carol is surprised that she revealed her secret, but Pecorine embarrasses her by saying that she considers them her friends. Suddenly, they bump into Suzium. Suzium explains that she and Saren have set up a snack hut on the beach, and she invites them all to come and eat. Despite not wearing her armor, Pecorine orders all the food on the menu because she wants to hit a new PR for filling her mouth with even more sausages and white cream. Carol wonders why there aren't any other customers, especially given how good the food is. Unfortunately, there is a rival snack hut that draws all of the attention of the customers. Saren tells them that the rival shack has a signature dish. At the rival hut, they meet Akino, the president of the place. She wants Saren to work for her as a business partner, but Saren declines her offer. The gourmet guild gets angry and offers to help Saren create an iconic dish. Mafuya was enjoying her meal during break time when Yukari arrived with some booze. Yukari is upset after seeing the lovely couples on the beach and starts ranting which makes Mafuya worried as it can damage the reputation of their hut, which is why she throws Yukari into the water. Kokoro and Yuuki search the area to look for ingredients. The other members are also searching for ingredients, and everyone brings different items. As they are deciding which dish they will make, a gigantic squid attacks the beach and puts everything on hold. Mafuyu asks the group to save Yukari, who has been captured by the beast. Pecorine jumps into the water to try and save her. Carol helps Pecorine by using her magic to throw the squid on land. Saren uses her sword and throws a fireball at the beast, finishing it. Eventually, the group decides to sell grilled kraken, which helps Saren gather customers. Saren meets Akina and appreciates her for offering partnership when her hut was in bad condition. Pecorine and Carol thank Kokoro for taking them to the beach, where they enjoyed themselves and learned about many new dishes. Carol uses a spell on the other three, through which they can enjoy peaceful swimming in the depths of the ocean. In the morning, Yuuki is training outside the house, Kokoro is doing the chores, and Pecorine is making breakfast. During breakfast, they discuss their vacation and the fun they have had. Later, Yuuki and Kokoro head to their favorite restaurant. However, they arrive to find the owner frantically making pudding, as if he has been possessed. Just then, a fortune teller named Shinobu arrives and apologizes for causing trouble. It turns out the owner of the restaurant is possessed by a ghost named Miyako, who is angry at him for putting bugs in her pudding. To get back at him, she forces him to make her white cream. I mean pudding every night. After seeing Yuuki's strong senses, Shinobu then asks Yuuki if he can come to their guild and help her, as he may have the power they have been looking for. Yuuki accepts, but once they arrive at the guild house, they are attacked by two girls who ask Shinobu why she took humans inside their guild. They learn that their help is needed to revive an ancient and powerful vampire. It turns out the vampire named Ilya is imprisoned in a crystal coffin, and when she comes out, she turns into a child and loses her magic. Ilya assures Kokoro that she will not hurt her lord, as his powers are the key to restoring her powers. Ilya's minions start attacking her, but as Yuuki tries to save her, he accidentally uses his powers and boosts Ilya's magic, restoring her to full power. The other ghost girls are happy, as she will now finally be able to take over the world. However, Ilya quickly reverts back to being a child once again. 
They are about to leave when Miyako tells them that they spilled her pudding, and if she does not get more, she will turn them into pudding and eat them. They take Miyako to their home along with Shinobu, scaring Carol, but Kokoro explains everything. Now, their task is to make pudding for her. Pecorine is wandering in the market when she hears that the police has closed the theater. She meets Akachi and Charlie with the restaurant owner. They tell her about how the boss was possessed by a ghost. All of a sudden, Charlie's mother slaps him. She has a shop in the market and Pecorine helps her with selling fruits, because after all, she already has two melons on her. When she returns home, everyone has been turned into tasty creamy pudding by Miyako. However, Pecorine makes a yummy pudding that Miyako truly loves. She gains heavenly energy, turning everyone back to normal. Shinobu takes Miyako back, and the girls start looking for Yuuki in the house, who has suddenly disappeared. The following day, Carol is still snoozing in bed when Pecorine calls her for breakfast. However, she ignores Pecorine and continues to sleep, forcing Pecorine to jump through the window. Carol scolds Pecorine for interfering in her personal space as she destroyed her favorite toy, causing Pecorine to apologize. Kokoro offers her sewing skills to repair it, but they are unable to find a cloth and decide to make a shopping trip into town. Since the town is big, they decide to split up to find the material faster. However, Yuuki quickly comes face to face with a shadow and attacks it, but it's too strong. Suddenly, an angel appears and it slices the beast into two. To Yuuki's surprise, she claims to be his sister. Another girl appears that yells at her for revealing her secret identity. She takes the girl away from Yuuki, who is still confused that his sister is such a hottie. After cleaning her room, Carol heads to her queen to discuss the latest events. She finds beautiful flowers on the way, thinking they will impress her queen. She arrives at her destination, but sees that her majesty is giving orders to the shadows, which turn everything into death. Kokoro Yuuki and Pecorine reunite, but nobody has found any material yet. Kokoro wants them to search one more time, but she and Yuuki end up devouring some thick tasty meaty creamy hottie dogs because they are hungry. Kokoro leaves to find some water when suddenly, Reno appears behind a tree and confronts her about her relationship with her brother. Shizuru appears and apologizes to Kokoro, introducing themselves as Yuuki's sisters. Just as they are talking, Yuuki mysteriously disappears. They split up and begin searching for him. Kokoro informs Pecorine about the situation, but they hear about the disappearance of a boy from the town. They think he might be Yuuki and go into an old building, but the boy turns out to be Charlie. Pecorine and Kokoro save him from the maniacs that want to kill him. Meanwhile, Shizuru and Reno fight with the shadows and defeat many of them, but they do not find any clues about Yuuki. Pecorine arrives and she suggests the idea of reporting his disappearance. They visit the guild, but find Yuuki there with a silkworm, which was part of his quest. The girls are proud of him for completing a quest all alone. As Carol returns home, she thinks about the shadows. After spending time with her guild, she no longer wants to continue her mission. Everyone returns home and presents Carol with her repaired doll. During breakfast, the group sits down to a tasty breakfast of fried eggs. As usual, Carol is upset that their delicious-looking breakfast does not include some hard brown bread for some reason. She reveals that a powerful monster has settled down on the road, disrupting the flow of numerous goods, including bread. She shows them a very hard and dangerous quest to get rid of the monster, which they reluctantly accept. It turns out they did not have much to worry about as they catch it with a trip wire, and then Pecorine hits it with a one-hit slash. In the meantime, a shadow appears in the town and kills some farmers. The group visits the guild to complete some paperwork. Yuuki tries to fill out the form, but he forgets the details in the middle, so the girls complete it. Pecorine meets Akachi and Charlie outside the guild, who thank her for finishing the ugly disgusting fat dirty monster quest. They stop by a crepe shop to eat some dessert. However, Shizuru and Reno are shocked after seeing Yuuki and the girls there. The owner arrives and serves the dessert to them for free. That night, Yuuki has a dream in which he sees everyone he knows lying dead on the ground. His guardian angel enters his dream and tells him that what he just saw may just be a memory or a vision of the future. Yuuki is traumatized after hearing this and decides to increase his training. Because of this, Pecorine begins to teach him how to use a sword. During lunch, Pecorine hears people talking about the king's family and the princess, which upsets her. Carol is feeding some stray cats when Akachi and Charlie appear, who suggest to eat lunch together with Carol. Suddenly, a gigantic shadow appears behind them, who causes a lot of trouble in the city. The shadow tries to eat a vendor, but Pecorine comes to the rescue and frees the man. She starts to fight with the beast, but Carol is reluctant to help her. The shadow charges at her, but Pecorine saves Carol from certain death. 
However, the monster grows stronger and fiercely attacks Pecorine. She takes on many hard blows before offering to sacrifice herself. She survives, but is severely injured. Kokoro uses healing magic, which triggers Yuuki's memories. Yuki wakes up in what appears to be hell. Kokoro, on the other hand, is teleported to a palace and sees a portrait of Pecorine with the king and queen. Kokoro asks her about the portrait, and she apologizes to Kokoro for lying. She reveals that she is in fact the princess of Landisol and that she should be sitting on the throne. Many years ago, her parents sent her off to visit the whole kingdom in the hopes that she will mature and become a worthy ruler. However, after returning from her trip, she was forgotten by everyone, including her own parents. Someone else had taken her place and her name. After that, she ran off and met Yuuki, Kokoro and Carol. This is why she always worried that they too would forget her. Kokoro reassures her that she and Yuuki will always be by her side. Carol secretly hears their discussion and feels bad for treating Pecorine as her enemy, when she always took care of her and treated her as a friend. Meanwhile, Labarista assures Yuuki that she is not his enemy but his ally. She tells him about Amoth, who is trying to help him by slowly restoring his memories. It is revealed that he was defeated alongside his friends by the fake princess, but somehow returned to the past with his memories wiped. She decides to take Pecorine's side to go against Her Majesty. She attacks the shadow monster on her own, struggling with her role in Pecorine's situation. However, Pecorine enters the battle while Kokoro watches. Meanwhile, the Labyrinth's leader sends Yuuki to the combat to help his friends. After Pecorine and Carol attack the Masked Shadow, Kokoro gives Yuuki a stat boost, and he epically defeats the monster with his sword. The group is then teleported back to the restaurant, much to everyone's happiness. Watch this next video, and I'll see you next time.